Hello and welcome to our new investment strategy update. We see three main economic topics right now. Resilient US demand, Europe slowing, and China facing structural imbalances. 18 months since the Fed's first rate hike, inflation has fallen substantially. But reaccelerating US demand is now challenging that progress. Rising real incomes are offsetting the effects of high rates, supporting consumers' buying power, just as the US job market is slowly rebalancing. What will it take to get inflation closer to the Fed's 2% target? Well, the Fed answer is a peak and plateau policy. In other words, keeping high interest rates in place for longer. But if demand stays strong, the Fed may have to raise them even further, risking a sharper economic downturn. The good news is that restrictive monetary policy is working in other sectors. Manufacturing, credit, housing, and trade remain weak. Put it simply, America's economic outlook now hinges on whether already high rates can slow down consumer demand. The picture in Europe is different. Here, both inflation and growth are losing momentum. Monetary policy is working, and given the growth risks, more rate hikes don't seem necessary. The Eurozone should post just positive growth this year, as its diverse economies offer some resilience. In China, property sector stresses continue to support private sector deleveraging. Government policy changes so far have disappointed markets. We have downgraded our gross outlook for China for 2023 and next year. More ambitious stimulus is needed, targeting domestic demand and income transfers to households. Globally, we expect more volatility as the profound shocks of the past few years continue to work their way through the global economy. We continue to watch closely for any new signs of inflation, as that would suggest higher rates and rising recession risks. So how do we prepare our portfolios and where do we see opportunities? Let's turn to Mark to find out. Growth is desynchronizing across economies, as Sami highlighted, generating different investment outlooks. This presents opportunities for investors and requires nuanced tactical choices. In our client portfolios, we underweight risk assets slightly, balancing the positive impact of disinflation with the negative impact of slower growth and higher rates. Our strongest preference is for high-quality fixed income, where we favor government bonds, US Treasuries in particular. They offer attractive return prospects and should do well in our base scenario of slowing growth and inflation while also helping to caution portfolios against severe economic downturns. We also like European investment-grade credit, and in emerging markets, we maintain a neutral stance, preferring local currency bonds. In equities, we remain broadly neutral. A peak in rates usually signals a tipping point. What happens next depends on how growth and inflation interact. We remain cautious because restrictive credit condition and slowing growth are weighing on earnings. Regionally, we prefer non-US markets, but have reduced exposure to Chinese stocks. In sectors, we favor defensives over cyclicals. In currencies, we remain neutral on the US dollar, which is supported by higher interest rates, but capped by expensive valuations. We expect the Swiss franc to remain strong and the euro to appreciate midterm. The yen should remain weak. Finally, a peak in US real rates should be positive for gold prices, and we keep a neutral allocation here. The global economy is experiencing profound change. Geopolitical competition, the environmental transition, and technologies such as AI are all creating or reshaping opportunities. We continue to position portfolios to take advantage of these new sources of growth and strengthen portfolio resilience. Thank you very much for watching.